Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will cover how to create constraints in a table. Now a constraint is a rule that states how data must be entered into a column. And as you can see on the screen, there are five main types of constraints. The first one is called the primary key constraint, and it ensures that every value in the column is unique and not repeated. Therefore, no two records have the same value in a column. Then we have the foreign key constraint, and it links records in a table to those in another table, and it's used to make sure that values in one table can't be entered unless those values already exist in another table. Then we have the unique constraint, and it ensures that every value in the column is different. Now the difference between the primary key constraint and the unique constraint is that the unique constraint can be used multiple times in a table, but the primary key constraint can only be used once. Then we have the not null constraint, and it ensures that values are entered into a column and can never be left blank. So whenever you enter a new record into the table, that particular column that has not null can never be left blank. And lastly, we have the check constraint, and it's used to set criteria for the data entered into a column. For example, say you want to ensure that only specific numbers are entered or only specific letters. So now let's take a look at our script. Now keep in mind I have another video called How to Create a Table in SQL Server and that one goes more deeper in this script and how tables are created. So here we're going to mostly focus on constraints. And then we'll, we'll still go over other parts but we're going to mostly focus on the constraints. So to create a table in SQL Server using SQL Script we use the Create Table Keywords. Follow that by the name of your table that you're creating. So Create Table Employee and then you use an opening parenthesis and always use a closing parenthesis and then the semicolon is actually optional. So the first column that we're creating for the employee table is called employee ID. Here we have our data type, we have our field size, and now we see two constraints. This is the primary key constraint and the not null constraint. Remember the primary key ensures that the values in the column are unique and never repeated and the not null constraint ensures that there's always going to be data entered for this particular column when you enter a new record in the employee table. So to create the primary key you just use the primary key keywords separated by a space and then use the not null keywords separated by the space. And also keep in mind that although I capitalize the keywords I do that throughout the script but it's actually also optional so if you type the keywords in all lowercase or both uppercase and lowercase it still will execute and always remember that our columns must be separated by a comma so we have a comma behind each column so with the employee ID we have the primary key constraint and the not null constraint so then our next column is called the department ID and here we have our data type our field size and we use the not null constraint again which is ensuring that there's always going to be values entered for this column when you enter a new record. Then the, for the first name, we use not null again. We used not null for the last name. And then when we get to the home phone column, you see here our data type, our field size. We use not null again. But here's a new constraint we're using now, and it's called the unique constraint. And that's just making sure that all the values that are entered for the home phone column are definitely different and unique. So in order to create the unique constraint you just type unique. Then we follow that with a comma. Our next column is called work phone. And for this column we didn't use any constraints at all. Then our next column is called gender. You see here our data type, our field size, and then the check constraint. We haven't used this one yet. Now this check constraint that we're setting up is going to ensure that the user can only enter an M for male or an F for female. So we use check and then we use an opening parentheses and we're also going to have a closing parentheses but inside the parentheses we're going to specify the name of the column which is gender. So check the gender column then we use the like keyword so we're checking the gender column to make sure it's like M and make sure the M has single quotes or the gender value that's entered is like F and then we use the single quotes again. So this check constraint will make sure that when 
the user is entering records for the employee table, the gender is going to be an M or an F, or it won't accept the value from the user. And then for our last constraint, we're going to do the foreign key constraint. Remember, the foreign key constraint links records in a table to those in another table. And it's used to make sure that values in one table can't be entered unless those values already exist in another table. So what we're going to do is we're going to link the department ID in this table to the department ID in another table called department. So to do that, we use the foreign key keywords. Then in parentheses, we type department ID because this is the column we're going to be linking. And then we're going to use the references keyword because we're going to reference the department table. We're linking the department ID in this table to the department ID in the department table. And then in parentheses, we put the name of the column, department ID. So now we've used all five constraints. We're going to click execute. And it was completed successfully. So now we're going to open the table to make sure it exists and all of our columns are there. So we type select, we use the select keyword, and then we use the asterisk. The asterisk means all. So select all the columns, then we use the from key from the employee table. And we're going to click execute on that. We're going to select all the columns from the employee table. And what that's going to do is open the employee table. So we click execute, and the table opens. So we see our fields. Employee ID, department ID, first name, last name, home phone, work phone, and gender. Keep in mind we can't see the constraints because that's all done in the background. But you've now created a table with five constraints named employee. If you'd like to learn more in-depth SQL, check out my SQL course that's located in the description below.